AITA for doing the same thing to my sister-in-law that she does to my son? So background. I, 32F, have a brother, Dave, 35 meters, who's married to, Sarah, 29F, they don't have children yet. I have a son who just turned 4 and a 3-month-old daughter with my husband, 39 meters. My husband and I live in Belgium most of the time. But we travel back to visit my family about once a month. In England. At home. We speak both English and French to our children. My husband is Belgian. And right now. My son is in this very sweet phase where he'll sometimes mix up the two languages and say a couple. Of words in English in a French sentence or vice versa. This has never posed a problem to us. And even the staff at his nursery have reassured us that it's very common and they tend to grow out of it once they start at school. My sister-in-law has decided that this is a problem. So when we're visiting my parents and she notices my son doing this, she'll correct him, but she does so really rudely. Whereas my husband and I will just gently correct him. Anyway. We're visiting at the moment and she's now decided that instead of correcting him, she's just going to start ignoring him when he does this. I sort of noticed her doing it when we arrived. And I thought it was odd. But assumed maybe she was just stressed. Her job is quite intense. But it only really became an issue yesterday. My husband was talking to my dad outside and I was feeding my daughter in the other room. And I'd left Louis with Sarah and Dave. When I came back downstairs, Louis was crying, and I managed to understand that he tried to ask Sarah for a drink. He has a special cup he uses that he was holding, so it was obvious what he meant, but that she just ignored him. I asked her why and she explained that she wasn't going to reply to him unless he said the sentence correctly and that I shouldn't be ignoring my son's obvious speech issues. For context. It's not that she didn't know what he wanted. She told me that she understood exactly what he was asking for. But that she was deliberately refusing because he hadn't asked correctly. This really pissed me off. But luckily my husband came inside at that moment and pulled me away so we could calm down and settle Louis. That night at the dinner table, Sarah asked me to pass her something. But she said it in bad English. She is English. I just mean that she asked for it in slang. Think. Pass us the peas. Will you? I had a bit of an epiphany and I just decided to totally ignore her. She asked again. And I did the same thing. My brother asked why I was ignoring his wife and I said that I'm not able to reply if she can't. Speak English correctly and that it's wrong of him to ignore her obvious issues with grammar. Everyone's pretty pissed off with me and I admit it was incredibly childish. But she was needlessly being a dickhead to my baby. Should I just apologize? Edit. Wow this really blew up. Thanks for all the comments and support. And thanks for all the esh YTA messages too. I'm not going to apologize to her. Because. To be quite frank. I think she deserved it. But I will have a conversation with her and my brother before we leave to try and explain that. For one thing, it's completely normal. And, more importantly, that if she keeps correcting or ignoring my son, I'll be severely limiting their contact. Although I doubt if I'll ever leave him alone in a room with her again anyway. To answer a few of the most common questions. When I said everyone was mad at me, I meant my brother his wife and my parents. Although, my parents don't agree with what Sarah's doing either. They're more trying to keep the peace. My husband is entirely on my side. And when he realized what Sarah had done to Louis, he only saw the aftermath. He wanted to cut short the trip. Sarah, and the rest of my family, only speak English, which I suppose goes some way towards explaining why she doesn't understand it. I do think it's a monolingual reaction because we've never experienced anything similar in Belgium. One final thing lots of questions about why we're in the UK so often. 
My husband has to be in London for his job about once a month, once every six weeks. So we tag along. I freelance. And a few of my clients are UK based. So it's a good opportunity for me to fit in a few meetings too. It also gives us the chance to bring Lewis and Misha over to see my parents before Lewis starts school. And we have to cut down on the visits. NTA. I wouldn't apologize. Given the fact that she refused to help a child and made him cry based on the same logic you're using. Which is actually her logic. If she can't even meet her own standards. She has no business imposing them on a toddler. NTA. I think it was a good way of making your point. Actually. Your son is four. For Christ's sake. I mean. For Christ's sake. Of course he's going to make a few grammatical and pronunciation errors. Gentle correction is the way to go. Not ignoring the kid unless and until he gets the sentence right. How does he even know what's right unless the adults in his life tell him? NTA. This is genius and I love it. I speak three languages and grew up learning them. At age 3 I interspersed words of all the languages and got my lowest grade ever. In nursery school. Because my nursery teacher was like Sarah. Years later this behavior is considered normal of a child becoming fluent in multiple languages and. They do sort it out by the time they are school age. What's Sarah's excuse? Your reaction was perfection. NTA. That was deliciously petty and spiteful. Your sill is the ah here and deserves to be treated accordingly. Despite your child being bilingual. Children that age mix their words up no matter what language they speak. When our kiddo was four. She was calling a kid a daycare a crouton. When I asked her what she meant. She said it was a word I had used about someone. It took a few minutes. Then it dawned on me. Dot she meant, Cretan. NTA. Tell your sister-in-law that until she shows you her qualifications in speech therapy. She should keep her opinions to herself on what is normal and what isn't. Especially when she doesn't speak in perfect grammar in her own native language. That ignoring a four-year-old. Refusing to get him a drink. Resulting in him crying has now resulted in no unsupervised time with your child because that is borderline abusive. NTA. You completely passive aggressively defended your kid against a childish adult. Was it petty? Yes. Was it deserved? Hell yes. I do hope that you will continue to make sure your sill is speaking correctly in future especially around the children eg children auntie said this is that the correct way to say that sentence quote and when the kids are older that they will also assist their auntie on how to say sentences correctly after all if she expects such high standards from a four-year-old bilingual child she should be speaking by example at a higher standards as she is much older than they are nta but it's time to stop inviting Sarah over. And Dave. If he doesn't see the problem with her behavior. If she insists on correcting your kid when the people who are actually in a position to know have. Made it clear he's not doing anything wrong. She doesn't get to complain about being completely ignored. NTA. Your son is four. Even if he only knows one language. It would be understandable if he can't form correct sentences every time. I have a 14-month-old son and I hope I can help him be bilingual like me. If someone does this to him, they're ta and I'll treat them as such. Speech pathologist here what your child is doing is called code switching and it's an extremely common and normal stage of language development in bi or multilingual kids. There is absolutely nothing to worry about with this and your son's code switching does not in any way indicate a speech problem, like your sill is claiming. You are doing the correct thing by being receptive and responding to him in whatever way he communicates. If you do choose to correct him, 
Just re-say the sentence back to him all in one language. But keep fostering that it is not wrong, and keep reinforcing his communication attempts by responding to the meaning normally. You're doing a great job NTA. NTA. Don't apologize to her until she apologizes to Lewis and promises not to be mean to him again. NTA. Honestly, Sarah got off easy considering what an ah she was being to your kid. This is the pettiness that I will support. NTA. NTA. Now. What are her feelings on the Oxford comma? BTW. She's being in awe and your son isn't old enough to understand why she was being mean. BTW. Your brother was also being in awe for ignoring your son. 2. NTA. Your son seems to be having a fairly normal time learning multiple languages in a bilingual household. And your adult Sil has decided to bully a child. Turns out she doesn't like being treated the same way. But she made her bed and gets to lie in it. I say you should ramp it up and ignore her unless she starts speaking in perfect French. I would love to see your Syl versus my niece when she was four. She very clearly understood both French and English. Raised bilingual, but had words she would prefer in one language and would correct people using the wrong one. For example, she preferred papillon over butterfly. If you would say a sentence with the word butterfly in it, she would interject papillon. Quote dot, and my niece, just like everyone else in my family, is stubborn. NTA. She was intentionally mistreating a child. She's incredibly lucky that's all you did. So it's good for your son but not your sill? NTA. Eyeball. NTA. Felt good I bet. That holier than thou attitude of sill is one thing that is guaranteed to rile me up too. But added to distressing a child definitely NTA she deserved every syllable. NTA. That's was a brilliant move. Keep it up at every possible opportunity. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.